You have a real preference for challenging roles, and um, they're not necessarily ones that are in the public light. Um, what attracts you to those, and what attracts you to um, I, I like the character of Emma and, um, uh, you know, I like characters that it's always much more fun to play someone who's kind of angry and mean or rude and, you know, all the, the emotions that you can't really express very easily in everyday life. So it's, it's always much more fun than playing someone who's just, you know, sweet and nice. And so, yeah, I like, I like, yeah, I love this story. What is your relation with the dress as an actress? Oh, I mean, it's, uh, you know, the costume is so important on this film because it is very much about, you know, uh, kind of losing herself. Um, and, but yeah, it was, I mean, it was so informative. She has, like, definitely a very uh, obvious sort of journey with her, her emotions and then it corresponds to her different costumes as well. So it was very informative and great. Do they always argue with the director about no, we had very much the same perspective, so it was a really good relationship and we worked really well together and I, I really like her, she's great. And what preparation did you do before um, this role? Well, I read the book and otherwise it was, you know, a lot of discussion with Sophie, the director, and the cast members and, and the script was really full and great. First of all, um, how are you? What's it like to have your film being played at the London Film Festival? I'm really excited. I had my first film playing here, but I missed the whole thing because I just gave birth. <laughs> so it's my first time coming with a film and really excited. Um, this film is an adaptation of Gustave Flaubert's um, novel of the same title. And um, what attracted you to turning this novel into a film? Well, I think it's, you know, like every uh, iconic classic piece of uh, literature, it's a timeless uh, book and you can... Uh, adapted. Uh, I think every filmmaker would have his take on it and so I think there is no time frame to make it. Um, your last film, Cold Souls, um, also starred Paul Giamatti, who's also in this film. What kind of attracts you to um, start making him star in your films? <laughs> well, I think he's a fantastic actor and a fantastic human being, and uh, I want to have a role for him in all the films I make, hopefully. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's like every adaptation, I think uh, every filmmaker would have a different take on it. Uh, for me, what I'm really attracted about uh, themes that I think are very contemporary, like consumerism. I think my Madame Bovary was probably the first literary um, character to be a victim of consumerism. Uh, there is also, you know, a very strong feminist uh, take uh, from Flaubert on this character who was constrained by her time, who didn't have the opportunity to develop as a human being, but just had the role of being a wife. <laughs> so I think there is a lot of uh, psychological themes that attracted me and also the aesthetics of the 19th century, which is something I always liked. And the research, the aesthetic research was really interesting for this film. Is that why you decided to do it now with consumerism and feminism being such big themes in 2014? Yeah, I think it's something you can relate to, you know, as, a, as a, our generation. You know, I live in New York when we had the crisis in 2007, the credit crisis, and I think you could have man a lot of Madame Bovary's today. They would just have credit cards, you know, they would use credit cards and, and probably go see a therapist and try to deal with uh, their bipolarity. And I think Madame Bovary had a sort of bipolarity even before this this term was understood uh, in terms of psychoanalysis or medically uh, but yeah I think it's a story that is timeless it's never gonna age it's a very character driven piece um, something that needs intense performances from mm -hmm. the actors how did you work with them to get such an awesome like act like acting from them? Well, Mia is just a fantastic actress. You know, her, her range is extraordinary. She's, uh, what attracts me to her is her ambiguity and her ambivalence. She's, um, I think the camera loves her because she's very enigmatic. You never fully know what she thinks or feels at a given moment. So that was, you know, what drew me to her. And uh, I think she's extraordinarily talented as an actress. <laughs> I suppose it's a bit, I guess a bit bullied really, kind of by Paul G. Matty's character, Hermaeus, who kind of, He's got an impediment, which is he's got club foot, and back in the day, obviously, they didn't have anything to kind of sort that out. So, he kind of, I suppose, it's like a little bit of a, a little bit of metaphor within the story, kind of when it all kind of goes pear-shaped. He's got to kind of get his foot chops off and stuff like that. It kind of represents a bit of like where the relationship's going between Mia and Charles and that kind of thing. So, did you find it difficult to um, act in a film that's kind of set in the past, trying to imagine what that'd be like? Well, to, to, uh, at first, I was a bit cautious of it because obviously I've got such a kind of uh, strong northern accent, so uh, I was very kind of cautious of uh, of trying to tone it down and stuff. And that, that's all I did really. I just kind of toned it down. 
I, mean, I must admit, like kind of going on set with kind of people like Paul Giamatti and Reese Siffins, it was uh, at first it was a bit taken aback, you know, kind of uh, next level. But like I said, my, I, the stuff that I did was pretty chilled in it as well, so it was all kind of nice pace, you know what I mean? Obviously, the film focuses around kind of like affairs and relationships and things like that. Um, what would yeah. Yeah. What would you say kind of a, an underlying lesson that the audience should learn from the film would be? Underlying lesson from the whole film? Wow. Uh, do what you want to do and be happy doing it, do you know what I mean? That, that's the honest truth. I suppose I was speaking to Sophie in the car and she was saying how a few kind of uh, uh, males have got maybe a bit hyped about it because of the promiscuousness of a woman, but she, um, she made a good point. Charles was boring. Not Henry. Henry wasn't boring. Henry's an amazing actor. <laughs>